afternoon, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. Let's give it up for Glenn Stevens and the Machado team. Great day today. So I'm really excited about uh, Joe and John, who are about to follow me on stage here. But before we bring them on, I wanted to give a little bit of the Detroit Regional Chambers. After all, we are the Chamber of Commerce for the leading automotive center in the world, and Michado about our view of EVs and use a little bit of data to tell a story. So first of all, let's start really big picture. Right now, the US, well, we're really not considered a leader in EV adoption. But I think what we can say is either by hook or by crook, the industrialized world is moving to electrification. And we have a choice to either be the leaders in that or the followers in that. And this is a region that leads and not follows. But the sky is falling. I spent a lot of time in Washington, DC. That's where I came from, and my job kind of requires me to do that. And then when I talk to members of Congress, and of course, as you see in the media, oh, EVs are faltering. Just in the last six months, right? EVs are faltering. Well, there's a little problem with that because the data doesn't support that. Even in 2023, which is the last bar on this chart, you're seeing strong growth in both BEVs and plug-in plug hybrids. Growth is still occurring in the US market for EVs, regardless what you might think or what you might want it to be to fit a political narrative. And then the other thing I hear is, oh, those are all just Tesla sales. Well, sure, Tesla is the leader. There's no doubt about that. But look at the change in Tesla shares just since the pandemic. They've gone from 80% to just a little over 50%. So it's not just Teslas that are being sold as we grow the EV market here in the United States. So why are we seeing these stories? Well, there has been certainly a proliferation of really incredible EVs, and Kathy from General Motors just mentioned some of the cool, really cool ones that are being built right down the road here. But we've gone from 12 models available to us as consumers just you know, two and a half, three years ago to over 40 today. So what we're seeing is, in my humble opinion, a momentary blip in supply meeting or not meeting demand. In other words, we've got a little bit more supply right now, especially a supply change of ease to what the demand is for the moment. When we turn to looking at our backyard here in Michigan, we look and we see, well, geez, you know, you know, not only is the United States not necessarily a leader in EV adoption, Michigan, as one of the 50 states, is not necessarily a leader within those 50 states. And I point this out to make a point, and that is EVs, have become a political issue, which is wrong. This is a business, this is a technology, this is an economic issue that is particularly important to the state of Michigan. Our polling, the Detroit Regional Chamber, we do a tremendous amount of polling uh, statewide with the Glenn Gariff Group, and some of our polling numbers are truly, truly discouraging. Less than half of Michiganders say that they support the industry shift by our Detroit three companies to electrification. But more challenging than that is the huge political divide. It's almost as if Democrats and Republicans live on different planets on many issues, but EVs have become one of the biggest issues in which there is a seemingly insurmountable political divide. I mean, look at these numbers. I mean, 70% of Democrats support the shift, 20% of Republicans support the shift, and when you look at, when you ask the question more specifically about would you be willing 
to consider an EV as your next purchase, you see these similar disparities. And if we are going to compete and win in the next generation of mobility that we started and won 100 years ago, we have to get united as Michiganders. And it's hard to lead if you don't have followers. Here's another stunning number. Only 18%, less than one in five, Michiganders believe that the shift to EVs is actually being driven by consumers, by market forces, 18%. So 71% think it is just government mandates, or my favorite, pressure from environmentalists. Now, I'm not sure how many people out there really know how business works, but usually making a profit, not easing, uh, not appeasing, excuse me, an interest group is the primary motive. And so let's get serious. EVs, regardless what particular government official might want to say or does say, they're not for everybody right now. They frankly may not be right for all applications at any time in the foreseeable future. But what's interesting to me, and especially as I talk to political leaders in Washington from all states, from all parties, it seems really interesting that they view the world of electrification as a static model. That all we have and what the EV market is going to be is what we have in terms of range, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of adoption. So, oh, these, these aren't going to work. You know, because, and I, I, I'm really glad that some of these people weren't around when, you know, we introduced the first mobile phone which had to be hardwired into our cars, made them mobile in a sense, but not really mobile like the way we have it today. Or I, I'm glad they weren't around when the first computers were introduced, right? This is a rapidly changing market, and the fact that so many people have a static view of what the technology and what the use and the use case is for EVs is absolutely stunning to me. And just look at, even if you took all that away, take away the future uh, improvements that are going to be made in electrification, look at the use case today. Take upper middle class and above households with multiple vehicles who live in some kind of housing, usually a single family house, that has the ability to have a level two charger in your home. Think of how many families fit that general description? How many millions of people fit that description? If you have multiple cars, one can easily be an EV, one can easily be a regular ICE vehicle, and you have that home charging. Think of that untapped market with just the vehicles that we have today, with just the technology that we have today, and we know that is moving ever, ever rapidly. And finally, regardless if you or the people you talk to, especially the political people that you talk to, you know, don't like EVs for whatever reason, right? You know, and Lord knows I've heard some, I've heard some strange ones. The fact is that not only is the world coming, but particularly China is coming. On this screen is a Chinese EV that frankly is of the highest of highest tech has terrific range. I think it's a great looking vehicle. In fact, some, there's some incredible designs coming out of China, and they're selling from anywhere between 25,000 and above. And guys are building them in Mexico, which opens them up to NAFTA. So we can either prepare for this, or we can pretend it doesn't exist. My suggestion is that we lead. Thank you.